Hey, it's Mike over at FishYourAssOff.com and today what we're talking about is redfishing with lures. There are a lot of different lures that will catch redfish. I'm going to cover what I think are the best ones um, that you can use, but just remember when you're fishing with a lure, it's not the lure as much as it is the person fishing with that lure, it's the technique. But I just want to show you uh, different scenarios where you might use top water or a jig or just, just different lures that are going to work best in different scenarios, I guess is what I'm saying. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and cover it. All right. I'm going to just say this, and it's as simple as that when I say it. Nothing works better for redfish than a gulp. And it's just as simple as that. So this right here is a gulp swimming mullet. And you couple this with an eighth ounce red jig head. Well, I like red, but you can use whatever color you want. You're just not going to do better than this. So this is number one by far. This is a swimming mullet, but you could get uh, the three inch shrimp too. Uh, the white ones are the ones I usually start with. And then I'll go to something darker either a natural looking one, molting, new penny, uh, all different colors, but you just need not go any further than this if you want to catch a ton of redfish. So this is number one, right? And I'm going to cover all the rest. I'm going to call them number two, but they're a distant number two. And they're all pretty close if you ask me. If I didn't have any gulp, okay? I, I didn't have access to gulp for some reason. This is what my number two choice would be. I would get a DOA cow, three inch shad, just like this with a paddle tail. And again, I would, I would set it up with my um, red jig head. This is tied onto one of my fishing poles at all time. You know, I'm a kayak fishing guide here on the Treasure Coast of Florida. And when, when the fish aren't biting other stuff, I can almost always get them to bite either a white DOA cow or something natural like this. You know, it's got the lighter with the dark back. And if the water's really murky, now this is, this is not a DOA cow three inch shad. This is a new one they have that's a five and a half inch jerk bait. And I'm really just kind of testing this, but this is the color. So a darker color like this. You'd want the three inch shad paddle tail, not, not this big five and a half inch jerk bait, but that's the color. See kind of a dark color with little flecks in it. Works real well for murky water. Okay, another excellent, excellent choice if you want to get some uh, redfish is a fake shrimp. DOA makes one, this is their three inch shrimp. This is one of their competitors. This is Charlie's. Very similar. And the great thing about these soft plastics is the redfish will just hold on to them for a little longer than they will with a really hard bait, like some sort of, you know, twitch bait, you know, hard plastic bait, top water, something like that, a spoon. Now I'm going to show you the spoons. A weedless spoon will catch the heck out of redfish, okay? So here's what you're looking at. You look at the sides of these, you know, they have just a little piece of metal wire that stops them from hanging up on oysters or grass or mangroves, but it's not so hard for it to bend that when they bite, they can't get hooked. So here you go. Now the key with these is you have to add a barrel swivel to the ends of your, of the ends of your um, spoons or after 15, 20 casts, your line's going to spin up and you'll be like, well, how come I can't cast anymore? You got to add barrel swivels to your spoons. These work great. These work great. So with those three I just named, the DOA Cal, the uh, Gulp, you know, your fake shrimp, your spoons, I guess that's four I just named, you're fishing them all the same. You cast them out, just like this, and you're just kind of bouncing them off the bottom. 
Now, if the bottom has too many snags, you just want to swim them real close to the bottom. But if you, you cast them out and you, you retrieve something like this. Slow, jerk, sometimes do three jerks, sometimes do one jerk. You know, just something erratic and you're basically bouncing these things on the bottom. Because remember, the redfish's world is down there. So your strike zone isn't too far off the bottom, is my point. Now, if they're feeding on mullet, if there's mullet schools in there, well then they're kind of looking up because the mullet are almost always on top. So, you know, if it's say three feet deep, you know, then you can use things like a topwater plug uh, to catch these um, redfish with too. So topwater works fine, but they're not very good at eating them. You know, a snook, his whole world is looking up and slamming stuff. A tarpon, same deal. But, you know, these, they're just not used to it. You know, they're used to doing this. You know, they even have an overbite. You know, whereas these fish that are always hitting up, you'll notice they have an underbite. Their lower jaw kind of protrudes above their upper jaw because they're used to slamming up versus slamming down. But let me just show you uh, some of the ones that, uh, if I were you, I would pick. I'm not sponsored by any of these lure companies either. These are just the ones I use and that I've always used. When they're feeding on mullet, it is real hard to beat a Zara spook. Right here. Zara spook. Just natural looking, you know, light on the bottom, dark on top. The Rapalas have, have some that are basically the same deal, just a smaller version. Right here. I guess redfish are cannibalistic because they even have a baby redfish <laughs> lure right here. These are all my different colors that I like. I like a bone color like this. This is another super spook, right? Mirror lure has some great mullet, fake mullet. Here's their uh, top dog. Great, great fake mullet, real realistic. And they also have a suspending lure that's a finger mullet. So this thing's going to be about run about a foot or two under the surface. And I'm going to show you the technique with that one. So you're going to cast it out there and twitch, 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 just like that for the um, for the suspending baits. Now a top water. Those are all walk the dog type of lures. And walk the dog just means you want to just do a zigzags right on top of the water like a wounded fish would be. You know, so they want to, they want to get the weak ones and the sick ones, right? So you're going to cast it out and it's basically like this. As you reel, you're just twitching y'all and all you're just moving your rod tip just like this the whole time you're doing it or down doing it. And, and all you're trying to do is get your bait to go back and forth. That one takes a lot of practice. To master walking the dog really takes a lot of practice. You know, getting your rod tip moving and just so the bait goes like this. But again, excellent, excellent lure for catching redfish when they're feeding on mullet. But again, you got to be in shallow water. If you're in 10 feet of water, you aren't catching any redfish. They're not going to be that high in the water column. <laughs> they're just not. So if you want to catch redfish on top water, you need to be shallow water. And I'm talking, I don't think I've ever caught one in water deeper than three feet on top water now that I think about it. So maybe that's the limit. Maybe they might do four, but I doubt it. Another thing, you can bust out your bass baits for redfish. They love spinner baits. Spinnerbait is an excellent, excellent lure for catching redfish. Another one to try. And they're fun to fish with, you know. I, I, I'll catch snook on these and trout on these and bluefish on these. They're, they're like a dollar. Walmart has a whole thing of them, of spinnerbaits and buzzbaits for a dollar. So who cares if they're only good for one time and they rust out and fall to pieces. It just doesn't matter. Here's another way to fish your fake shrimp, your gulps, 
and your DOA cap. Get yourself a popping cork. Just like this, rattle cork, whatever you want to call them, right? It's a bunch of different kinds. Here's another one. Got rattles in it. Makes noise and it attracts the redfish over to it. You have your fake shrimp or your gulp or whatever tied to the bottom of it. You know, just like this. And you just pop, 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 pop. Now this is another one of those that your leader, so here's your popping cork, here's your whatever, shrimp, gulp, DOA cow, whatever, tied here. And you want it between 18 and 36 inches or so of line between there and there. And here's the bottom, because you just want to keep it off of the bottom. So if you're fishing the grass flats, you know, if you can keep it this far off the bottom, that's what you want. So you're, you're, you're drifting the grass flats, pop, 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 pop. You probably don't have to reel. If you're drifting with the tide, just pop, pop, and just cover as much of those grass flats as you can possibly target. Focusing on the potholes. Redfish and stuff love to hang out in potholes to ambush. You know those sandy potholes that are in all those grass flats? Focus on those. That's, that's where most of your fish are going to be. But that's all you're doing. Pop, pop. And just making your lure come up and come down. Oyster bars. Oh, this is deadly around oyster bars. And you can have a teeny tiny leader. I mean, it could be 12 inches and still work. A lot of times, unless the redfish are super spooky, they don't care. I mean, they don't care. When they're in that feeding mode, you can, so you can fish real skinny water with your, with your popping cork is, is my point. Another great place to use the popping cork is when you, say you have a tidal creek, right? And there's a line of Spartina grass or something like that along the side, cast it right up against that and just pull in this up current and just reel in your slack, popping every time, and let it run down that line of Spartina grass. And you'll catch flounder and black drum and everything doing that same thing too. So, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, this is, this is a great way to catch redfish. You know, a lot of people overlook it because it's kind of goofy, but I'm telling you, it, it works. You will catch a ton of redfish. Uh, mud flats, side breaks, oyster bars, yeah, mangroves. Uh, you know, if it was a mangrove, I would probably go weedless. You know, might want to use your spoon or rig your gulp weedless or your DOA cow weedless. And to do that, you would just, um, where's my weedless hook? No, oh, they fell on the floor. Yeah, so you're just using a, a worm hook, right? Just like this. And you just you're just gonna rig it weedless. I'll tell you another thing that people forget about is the good old bucktail jig. This thing right here catches everything. Now me, if I were you and I was using this to catch redfish or flounder or black drum or all those things that are gonna eat this, I would buy some frozen shrimp and put a teeny tiny little piece of frozen shrimp. So I would just tip this jig with um, you know a little piece of shrimp and just fish it just like this again. Go, bum bum, bum bum, bum bum bum, something like that for the redfish. If it was flounder, just bum, because they're slow. Bum bum, yeah, just slow things down. But I'm telling you, people always forget about these. These, these, this is a sim one of the simplest lures there is but it catches just about everything, just like a spoon does. But that's really it. I just want to cover the various lures that I use anyways um, for catching redfish. Redfish hit lures. You know, when redfish are in feeding mode, they'll hit anything. You could probably throw a piece of spinach or broccoli on a hook and they, they'd probably eat it. I mean, when they're feeding, they're feeding. Uh, yeah, anyways. I think that's it for today. Go to our website. It's www.fishyourassoff.com. There's all kinds of how-to articles and videos about catching inshore fish uh, right there. But I think that's it for today. So until next time, we'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye.